Okay, so pushpakastha. What what is the meaning of that? Springtime. Uh, no. Time when flowers. This ha ha. Ta ha is to seated, seated. Situated or seated. Uh, well, the literal meaning is like situated, situated, and pushpaka. Uh, it refers to actually the the mana that. Uh, I have plenty. Yeah, to return from Lanka. Uh, yeah, probably it had lots of flowers in it. That's why it's called Pushpaka. So, Pushpaka is the Vimana. And, ha, ah, situated. Situ situated on the Vimana. Situated on the... Um, okay. Vimana. Pushpaka Vimana. Pushpaka. Pushpaka Viman. Okay. Uh, then Nutaha. Oh, what is that? Well, I can see. It's a participle. Uh, Nam. Uh, Datu is Nam. Datu is Nu, actually. Nu. <laughs> uh, Naomi. Okay. Aham Naomi. Uh, I bow down. No plus ta. It's a ta, ta anta, those who know grammar a bit more. Otherwise, it's just ta, which makes it into a passive participle. Um, passive participle. Uh, and so, nu is to bow down. So, how you translate it as a passive participle? Having worship. Yeah, worshipped. Mm. Well, literally, Naomi bowed down, bowed down too. Okay, that's more literal. Okay. Um. Okay, strip he he. Noun. Noun, feminine. Three three. Three three. Strip he he. Yeah. Uh. Five women. Okay, stuyamanascha. Stuyamanascha. So that sha is a product of sarga. And, uh, and uh, we have seen that before all these uh, a mana mana mana. Uh, what does it indicate? Yes. Present passive participle. Uh, present participle and uh, something more particular about it? Passive. 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 Okay, present passive. So let's say uh, it's adjective, present passive participle, uh, and uh, yeah, masculine one one. So stu yamana and uh, what's the verb? To, like to pray. To to glorify more specifically. Okay, so we have uh, words like stuti and uh, stotra. Sorry, stupa. It, it, is it from this word? Uh, stupa? Yeah. Uh, one second. Uh, yes, uh, well, um, stupa. I, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, stupa meaning a heap pile, a Buddhist monument. Yeah, we have all stupas, Buddhist stupas. But uh, I think... Mm, I don't think there is a connection. Uh, okay, okay, fine. More like stotra, stuti, these are the words coming from this verb. So stuyamana, okay, uh, praised, okay, glorified. Stuyamana, huh? Cha, okay, cha is. And, and vandibhi, what is vandibhi? Okay, it's three, three, of which word? Yes. Yeah. Vandana is to of prayer. Uh, vandana is to become a noun. Well, basically, what we need to do, we just need to remove the vibhakti. Uh, bhihi is a vibhakti. So what we have left is vandi. Vandi. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there is one more thing that uh, vandi. 
is uh, actually Van Din. Let me just check it. Van Din. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Van Din. Van Din. Yeah, Van Din. It's Van Din. A panegyrist, bard. <laughs> you have all those words in English that uh, you very rarely see. But well, basically, it refers to to musicians, uh, reciters. Okay, previously they were there in the palaces to praise the kings and you know recite poems, sing songs of of glorification and so on. So like this, uh, so So how do we translate this third case, third bhakti? For example, just give me one meaning of it. By the reciter. By the, yeah. By the reciter. By the reciter. Yes, yes, yes. By the. Uh, reciters. Okay, like that. The vireje, okay. Vireje. What is this kind of word? Vireje. Is it a verb? It's a verb. Yeah. It's a verb. And can anybody Atmanapada? get? Atmanapada. Uh, it's Atmapada. Yeah. Which which tense then? Present tense. Past tense. Yeah. There are few oh, <laughs> few endings with a. Uh, well, actually, not a few. Um, so yeah, a few, a few, a few. Two or three endings with M. Well, one of them is this past tense, lit, reduplicated. But in the case of this datu, can you can anybody guess of the datu? What root we have here? Virege. Well, the root root is Raj. Okay. <laughs> Raj, Raj. Okay. Raj. So, Raj would be one one means he, and what means Raj? Raj. Raj means to to be glorious. Okay, to shine. Here. Um, so. Okay, Raj. Yeah, with the long R. To shine, to glitter, to appear splendid, beautiful. Then it means to rule, to govern, yeah, to direct, to regulate, and so on. Uh, but the primary meaning is to to shine, yeah. And virege to. Probably your voice is breaking. My voice is breaking. Yeah. Uh, well. Uh, okay, so virege is what. Um, you translate usually these words as like uh, was uh, present, was splendidly present, splendidly, magnificently present. Okay, you you usually use these kind of words virajate and viraje. Uh, so viraj means to. Yeah, in relation to... Uh, I cannot hear you properly, it's something wrong. Yeah, same thing, I also, your voices are also breaking. So, I wonder what's happening. Yeah, just give me a... Five seconds. Is anyone using internet? Okay, maybe some temporary... Uh, connection problem. Uh, can you hear me now properly? Yes. Better. Yeah, this is some temporary connection. Yeah, so it was plainly present, usually used in in relation to deities, uh, forms of Bhagavan, uh, or different kings, like that. So shined, yeah. Magnificence, okay. So Raj, yeah, or long A. Uh. So you you get words like Raja from this root, for example, yeah. One who rules. Okay, Bhagavan. We have Bhagavan. Okay, that's noun. Noun, one, one, Bhagavat. 
Bhagavat, yeah, with a sh short A, uh, which becomes long. Uh, Bhagavan. Uh, Rajan. Rajan. Uh, yes, yes, very good. So it's masculine of, uh, yeah, basically the same word, Rajan. Eight one. Oh, king. The first case would look, would look at, like Raja with both A long. And Sambodhan is Rajan. And which basically is same as the uh, undeclined word, Rajan. Then Grahai, Grahaish. Grahaihi. Grahaihi. Okay, this is noun. Three, three. Oh, graha, masculine. Uh, three, three, aihi. Uh, With the planet. Yeah, planets, it refers to the planets. Grahas. Uh, and how we translate it as three, as the th third vibhakti? With the, with, with the planet. With the planet. With or by the planets. Okay. With or by the planets. Chandra. Chandra Ivoditaha. Okay, so Chandra. that's now. Uh, what case it is here? Chandra. Masculine 1-1. One, one. Masculine 1-1. One, one. One. Uh, now why? Why? Where is the Visarga? It got deleted because it's followed by the vowel. Yes, it's deleted because it's, um, it's followed by the vowel, yeah. And the further sound, it does not take place by the rule. Like, A can, in any other situation, I would merge with E and produce A. But in this situation, after the deletion of Visarga, both vowels stay as they are, just side by side, without any further transformations okay next ivoditaha what is ivoditaha ivoditaha eva plus udita eva yeah. plus uditaha here we have a uh, words two words actually uh, eva is undeclinable word meaning like okay like and uditaha again a Plus A plus U is O, so Ivoditaha. It will be participle, yeah. So let's say um, adjective. Uh, and what is the root? Which verb is it from? Udi. Uh, Ud E, yes. So, ut plus the root e means to rise, to rise. So it's masculine, one, one, uditaha, risen. Let's say here it, it has active sense, okay? Not passive. Mm. Having, right. There is one, there is one, uh, one uh, thing that you can really note down uh, it will be very handy so this ta participles which which often become passive like uh, nutaha for example yeah we had here nutaha bowed down too so he was the object of bowing down so often they produce passive passive participles yeah but when there is a verb of movement like gum, or here we have the verb e. This suffix ta will uh, be active. Okay. So for the verbs of movement, this passive participle will not be passive, it will be just active. So it's adjective, one who has reason. 
Judaism. Like gata, gata, the, the gone, somebody who has gone, okay? From gum you get gata. And, and gata will, uh, yeah, will be in active voice. Oh, Uditaha. Okay, next. Bratra uh, Bhinanditaha. So there are two words. Uh, again, they are um, joined by Sandy. Bratra. Bratra plus Bratra plus Abhinanditaha. Is it Bratra Bhinji? Uh, no. no, Bratra. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, bratra. bratra. Yeah, it, it is not a samasa actually. It, these are just separate words. Um, even though they there is no space in between them, uh, these are these are separate words. And abhinandita with a short abhi. So bratra. Okay, those who know declinations, it's a noun, masculine. Uh, which case it is bratra. Oh, I think we went, uh, there was again lapse in connection. Okay, we are back. So masculine word, bratre, bratre, brother, yeah. The words ending in the, that, that uh, table you need to remember. Uh, so by or with brother okay and abhinanditaha it's again taha okay again the participle. Pa passive participle taha okay and uh, adjective passive participle and we yeah we see masculine one one here so if it's a participle, it's always made from verb. So the verb is abhi nand. It's a plus nand. Abhi is a prefix, and the root is nand, means to uh, to be joyful, to feel welcome. Yeah. So abhi nand means to to congratulate to Hey, yeah, Abhinan is welcome. to congratulate, hail with joy, welcome, greet, like that. Right. It can all it can also mean just direct meaning to to rejoice, Abhinan, like in all respects, like to completely rejoice or be be happy. Yeah, but very you know conventionally and very often it means to congratulate someone. So. They congratulated. Congratu congratulated. Okay. So ta. So ta. Saha plus ata. Ata, yeah. Saha. He. It's a. It's a pronoun. Pronoun. One more time. If you remember, what's the pronoun originally? Saha. Tad. Tad. Yes, correct. And it's masculine. Tad. One one. He and atha. Atha. Undeclinable word. Thereafter. Uh, yes. Uh, atha. After that. Let's say then. Okay. One of the meanings, there are, there are at least five or six meanings for atha. You can uh, see them in the Avyaya list of words or from the website, it's quite interesting. Uh, next, next, Sot Savam. And uh, it's, it ends on Anuspara, the product of uh, Sandhi again. Okay, Sa, Sa Utsavam. So Utsava is a masculine word. Utsava is a masculine word. So uh, why do I see this noun in feminine gender here? 
Bahuvrihi smasa. Yes, yes, exactly. We are not talking about the festival. We are, but we are talking about uh, somebody who has a festival or somebody who is in relation to the festival in some way. So that would be feminine two one. And and sa utsavam sa stands for saha. Uh, with the festival, okay. Um, with festival. And it's an adjective, so festive, we can say, festive. Yeah. And pravishat, next word is pravishat. What kind of word it is? Verb. Verb. Yeah, what? Past tense. Past tense. Past, Past tense. Long, we call it. R plus. Uh, yes, yes. Pra. One second. It's pra plus vish. Okay. Uh, well, the thing is, there is actually no a. Uh, yeah, why, yeah, yeah. Why? Why this a comes here is because um, we have pra with a short a, and in this particular past tense, you add a. Uh, a suffix which is a uh, okay so both are uh, they join together and produce long um, this is one one so pravish means pravish yeah pravish means to enter so pravishat he she or it entered Entered. We, we have the word pravesha from it. Pravesha. And purim. Purim. Feminine to one. City. Oh, 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 two. Feminine. Uh, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, one. Yeah, second vibhakti. Purim, the city. As the object. Okay, so let's join it all together. Uh, where are the verbs? Mm. Okay, pravishat. Pravishat is a verb. Another. Virej. Virej. Virej another verb. So we'll have at least two sentences. Uh, let's start with vireje. What is the object? Or, oh, sorry, subject object of vireje. Uh, subject will be in the first vibhakti. Uh, well, there is for Vireje, let's oh, Bhagavan. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the same verse uh, is there Bhagavan. And what about the what about the object? Well, it's simple. There is no object because this kind of verb cannot take object. You cannot, you cannot uh, present, you cannot be present someone. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a, what, what we call akarma kadhatu or intransitive verbs that just by, the, by their meaning, they don't take objects. In every in language you have such uh, verbs. Some verbs take objects, some verbs don't take objects. Okay, Bhagavan Vireje. Bhagavan, the Supreme Lord was splendidly present other things uh, from the first verse, Pushpakas Tho. Okay, this is describing Bhagavan. Any other words describing Bhagavan? <laughs> Basically, it's just, you, you just need to match the cases. So everything 1.1 will be related to Bhagavan. Nutaha. Nutaha. Anything else uh, is there? Stuya manaha. Pray be, was praised. Also. Oh, okay. So next, stribhihi. How do we connect stribhihi? Nutaha. Nutaha. Yeah. So by the women. So this would be. Uh, 
Okay. Subject, a subject, a passive subject of Nutaha. And Bhagavan would be the, Bhagavan is the object of uh, Stribhihi and at the same time Bhaga, Bhagavan is the subject of Vireje. So one word can be simultaneously subject and object in the sentence. Okay, Stribhihi, Stuyamana, Cha. Oh, what are we connecting with Cha? Which things we connect? No time. No time. Exactly. Yeah. We connect these participles. So he was this and he was that. Stuyamanascha. Vandibhihi. Okay. Vandibhihi. That is connected to Stuyamana. Yeah. Same like. That's the subject for Stuyamana. Uh, no. Uh, subject. Uh, object is karma, subject is karta, uh, like the agent, the doer is subject. Uh, it's just, it's okay, it's just the terminology. So, by the reciters, praised. Uh, next, Vireje uh, Bhagavan Rajan Sambodhana. So, it's there, Rajan Grahais Chandra Ivoditaha. Okay, we, we have here a second. Mm, close second let's say rel related sentence uh, the moon by or with the planets and which has risen okay Chandraha. so chandraha it's an it's a subject for another sentence uditaha. what is uditaha Her, is the verb here? Uh, Uditaha. Yeah, let's let's think over it carefully. Can we make it a verb? Uh, theoretically, yes. The moon which has risen. And then, then how do we connect uh, with or by the planets? Because rises Chandra. with the planets. The moon which has risen. With the planets? Uh, the moon with the planets which has risen. But what's the idea? Uh, it's not just about rising, I think. It's, it's connected with the it's a similarity between uh, uh, Bhagavan. Yeah, Bhagavan. Splendidly with the moon. Bhagavan goes with the moon. Uh, then uh, Grahai, uh, what, what, is, what is the parallel for the planets in the analogy? from our main sentence. You can even see by the case. Oh, three be here and two, uh, and one be here. Yes, stuyamanaha, uh, nutaha. Yeah, I also think so. Uh, with the planets, the moon, uh, then, uh, this is the description of Chandra, the moon that has risen. And uh, what what is the verb then of the Of course, of course, if if you like, there could be another take on it. Stuyamana and Nutaha, yeah, that can be done. We could we could uh, imply the Nutaha and Stuyamana and the and the analogy would be like, uh, okay, as Bhagavan was uh, bowed down to and praised by the reciters and women. Similarly, the the. Uh, sun, the moon that has risen is kind of a bowed down to or you know worshipped and praised by the planets uh, figuratively yeah this is one thing another another uh, take on it would be uh, if we how Bhagavan is splendidly present amongst them 
so the chandra is also uh, present rise and along with the planet I means in among the planets but, but there is no uh, grahai he, grahai he cannot mean among for that you would have used uh, sixth or seventh case vibhakti and we used tritiya vibhakti so my my second option is so bhagavan was splendidly present in the same way vireje chandraha just like chandraha is splendidly just like the moon that has risen is splendidly present with uh, with together with other planets that could be another take um in the same way the bhagavan was splendidly present uh, so anyway uh there is no commentary on it so let's just let's just take this as it's a bit more simpler idea than than the previous one which we just oh, there is a verb virege yeah we kind of it was plan shown sorry virege means it shown so shown yeah 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 exactly. the point if if you take even the literal meaning of the of the verb yeah it means to shine so so chandra with the with the planets splendidly shown just like bhagavan splendidly uh, was splendidly situated with all those people around him i guess yeah let's let's leave it this way it, it seems like cleaner cleaner interpretation even though the previous one was also kind of interesting uh, when we had to uh, supply in anutaha and stuya manaha and graha would be there uh, the grahas will be their um, subjects anyway whichever way it's it whichever way it, it looks beautiful anyway <laughs> so rama was beautiful with uh, all these things around him all these people next bratra abhinanditaha sotra okay we have another verb pravishat Let's take this down. Pravishat. What is the subject of Pravishat? Who entered? I cannot hear you. Uh, who who entered? Uh, what is the subject of Pravishat? Taha. 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 Yes. Uh, he entered so here here we don't need to uh, actually uh, take take bhagavan from the previous verse because the pronoun in itself is a is a is a, is a good sufficient agent you can use it as such so he entered what any object Oh, the the connection is really slow because I'm just reloading my whiteboard because it started hanging and this is not responding. So, just a second. Okay, so he entered the city, Purim. the city is the object he entered the city um next other words bratra abhinanditaha so where do we connect bratra and abhinandita welcomed by his brother uh, yes congratulated by uh, these two are connected definitely but where do we connect them into the main sentence saha pravishat purim Uh, well the thing is uh this is a Pravi participle that's like it connected to the subject he what kind of he he who was congratulated or praised or whatever yeah let's say congratulated by his brother that that's the connection It, this uh participles present participles 
they are always adjectives. Usually they are never connected directly to the word. They either connected to, to the object or subject. So, and then uh, Eva, so it's, okay, sorry. Yeah, like, here is, Eva is a connection in the previous sentence between Bhagavan and Chandra. And, 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 yeah. and Sotsavam. Okay, we decided, it, it was adjective because it is a Bahuvrihi. So the city that had a festival. City with the festival. In other words, the festive city, okay? So in, in this way, congratulated by his brother, he entered the city. Okay, and I will read the translation from, from the Bhagavatam. O King Parikshit, as the Lord sat on his airplane of flowers with women offering him prayers and reciters chanting about his characteristics, he appeared like the moon with the stars and planets. And then thereafter, having been welcomed by his brother Bharata, Lord Ramachandra entered the city of Ayodhya in the midst of a festival. Okay. So, yeah. Atta has been corrected. Sorry? Atta. 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 Atta? Oh, yeah, Atta. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, he was plainly present and then he entered. So, just co connecting both sentences um, through the verbs, you know. He was doing that and then he did this. Okay, any any questions? Oh, oh, oh. All right, uh, then uh, that's all for today. And uh, yeah, here, here actually, sorry, sorry. One thing to note from this verse is um, to s see how uh, these present participles, they take their own subject. This is quite nice. So, nutaha tribihi. He was bowed down to by the women, okay? Mm. Then, Stuya Manaha, he was praised by the reciters. And then another... <laughs> and then another, Abhinanditaha, uh, he was congratulated or it's translated as welcomed uh, by, by his brother. So this is... This is the, this is repeated three times in this verse, this kind of structure. Mm. All right, then, uh, thank you very much. And, uh, uh, okay, there is a question. How can we distinguish the present participle and the past participle in the translation? You mean the time, yeah? Present from the past, how to translate it? Well, there are two things. Uh, one thing is, let me write it down. Another text box. Well, there are things that, which are present participles uh, by default and they never change. This is, uh, in Sanskrit, it is, this is a shatri, shatri suffix, which looks like at, basically. Okay, and then um, shana, shana suffix, which looks like ana. And often it's mana, okay? 
Anyway, it's Ana, like we had here, Stuya Mana. So this is this will be always in present tense. Oh yeah, in the tense of the of the main verb. Now sometimes ta suffix, which which is basically ta. I'll just enlarge it a little bit. Now that also is sometimes translated as um, in the past, but that that will be judged by the context. By the context. So this, so these two guys over here, they're always present in present. Okay, Shatri uh, and Shana. And this over here, it can be both uh, past and present. Yeah, from the context. You judge from the context, that's the easiest thing to do. So, yeah. I hope I clarified it a little. Uh, please ask if there is anything. Oh, yeah, yes, fine, fine. Yeah, so yeah, if it's a new information for anybody, yeah, please uh, note down these endings because we do encounter these participles every day actually in our verses. So it's good to not be aware. Okay, so in this case, being praised, yes, being praised. Uh, uh, you can translate also who was praised. Why? Because if the if the tense of the main verb is past tense, then uh, any participle or any even gerund will naturally go along and will also be translated in the past tense. It's kind of present in the past. Okay, at that time it was present tense. Now it's everything in the past. <laughs> So you, you always have to go back and look at the main verb, okay? If it's if it's in the present or in the past tense and then adjust things accordingly. So you can, you can have like a, this two Yamanaha will be like a present tense within the larger context of the past tense, which is determined by the main verb. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for a very nice question. And uh, yeah, we are done for today. Thank you all so much. Sri Ramachandra, Vijayate, Hare Krishna, and Namo Namaha. Thank you, Nitya Nandaji. Thank you, Mahara Prabhu.